All right, a few days after deadline, we now get the build for New Year's Evil. I believe that's the name of it. We got the build for it. We got three weeks. Three. And I'm going to tell you, after we got a, actually a very surprising deadline, I don't know what JD or just Alex, if they even watched it, it was more better than I expected. It actually was quite good. It was easy on near. When you really look at when it comes to War Games, War Games was here because of who reappeared. Well, the two who reappeared. Without them there, when you just look nose to nose with matches, it easily was very close. Very close to each other. And I'm saying this because now I like NXT. I love NXT. I review NXT. And I'm being honest. When it came to Deadline, they did a great job. They did. It may not be the greatest show they've ever put on in WWE, but it was easy on par with the most recent one under the new administration that we're having supposedly with a Paul Levesque. And I'm not even against Triple H. I like Triple H. And his booking is not all bad, but let's make it clear. It's still not good. The booking he's giving is not 100% good. No matter if you're seeing a, a long arc, doesn't mean it's a good arc. So what do we get here with Shawn Michaels' brand? I'm going to tell you this. It's not all perfect, and it looks like something either was rigged to happen, which I think it did. One person did get hurt accidentally, which was Dijak. It's hard to say how the build's going to go for the next three weeks. Is it going to be good, bad, or is it going to be ugly? Let's open with... Hmm. Before the show started, they had Trick Williams and they had Mello coming up to the up to the venue, up to where they're going now. And he's being interviewed. And Mello, instead of standing in the background covering his boy, like saying, Yeah, my boy is doing great. I'm proud of him, he walks away from him and goes inside. That's the first sign of what is to come at the end of the show. Now you're gonna say, Oh, this is this is trick. This is all this is all for setting up what's gonna happen with trick and mellow, which it did. So it was done alright. Now, the opening match, metaphor versus Fallon versus Jim. Well, let me give it to you like this. Look at metaphor. The only person there that just isn't effective is Jackson because she still has a broken wrist. But when you see how Nolan Dar uh well I look at Nolan Dar. He really doesn't have much charisma. You see Last Legend, who has a lot of charisma, but not very great in the ring. She's okay, but she's a, a power wrestler that needs to be more of a manager than a power wrestler. But due to her size, it just doesn't work that way. Then you have Mensa. And he's fine, but he should be doing something else. And then you got Fallon... Then you have J Briggs, Biggs, and you got Jensen. All of them who have been well established. They've been set up for many, many, more than a couple of years now. But you wonder if any of them are going to break out. Fallon had now two, three times already. She's been in storylines. She's been in storyline with which she is now in Tiffany Stratton. She was in storyline with Keanu James. And I believe she was in another storyline. What was the other one she was? I think... What was it? I can't remember. It's been so long. I don't think it was with Electra. It was somebody else. I just can't remember. But she had two or three storylines and she's still in the same position. She hasn't really progressed much. So you stick all six of these people with a injured Jackson at ringside. And what did we get from this match? The one person that seems to be being pushed finally. And that's Biggs. And I can tell you this, when you look at him, he does look like he's, he looks like he's ready to finally go out on his own. Will they do it? I don't know. I don't know if he's, well, I'm saying he looks like he could be ready to go off on his own. But do they believe he's ready? I don't think so yet. Maybe next year, the middle or the beginning of the year, they may actually do something with him if they do a, another draft. 
And it was Briggs who got the win over Nolan Dar. So now he said, you know what? And this is after the match. I want to go after the Heritage Cup. So now he's put it out there. The question is, how many weeks will this build up to? Will it be at New Year's Evil? Or are they just going to get it over with quickly? Because the way they got Dar, Nolan Dar doesn't seem to be getting stripped of that thing at all. So I'm wondering if they're going to do this very quickly just to get it over with so Briggs could possibly have some type of conflict with Jensen because Jensen was not too happy that he was trying to tell Briggs that, hey, um, you're a power wrestler that only does one single match. This is six matches. You may not do it right. But he didn't look like he was too fond of knowing that he's getting somewhere and he's not. So... This is going to be a big question. Next match for the breakout tournament for the men. Now, let me say this. I don't remember the guys' names, all of them. I do have their names written down for the two matches that were done. You got what? Um, I think eight or nine guys. I think nine guys. No, eight guys, I believe. There was eight. And all of them were interesting to a certain point. But you can see something very apparent. If you guys didn't notice, every last one of them were either collegiate athletes or football players. One of them is a shot putter. These are the original people Vince had gotten last year before, well, within the last year, the year and a half. He did say he did not want any independent wrestlers anymore. And all the people that were hired to work in the performance center to get trained, they're all the people that Vince wants. Football players. One guy's a shot putter. I can't remember what the other guys were. They were probably all football players or maybe something else. Track and field. All of them, they're all from college. Hearing Vic Joseph said they're from around the world. No, they're not. They're all from colleges. And they're all literally collegiate athletes. All of them are football players. Maybe basketball players. One is a shot putter. Maybe one runs track. It don't make a difference. They're exactly what Vince wants, and even though now Triple H is the one who's running the show, they've been pulled out. All, I think all eight of them. Now, one of them has been eliminated, and that was Bear Hill. Bear Hill looks like he's another Native American like a Eddie Thorpe, and he gets nailed in the back with a chair by Lexus King. So now, instead of him being penalized, Lexus King, he's now added to the tournament as now the breakout star. And Ava is now not wrestling. She's not in any faction. She's just helping a Shawn Michaels by making announcements for her. Hmm. You went from a system where supposedly you got schism that was not really great, but you had... All four of these persons that look like they could be something. And now two of them have been released. One is, and I will be talking if I don't forget about Joe Gacy. He looks out of his mind, like an, almost like an R-Truth type of character. And you have Ava Rain or Ava doing nothing but being an errand girl. Is what you get. First match in the breakout tournament. you got Bourne versus Opa. Philly. Now, let's make this clear. I've seen Philly before. They showed him before. They showed him in ring before, I think months ago. When I saw him, I thought, that's, what, that's one of Vince's boys. I didn't say nothing, but I knew it. That is one of Vince's boys. That is one of those people that Vince hired specifically for him to be a pro wrestler. And I've only recently learned what about um, anyone who does shot put. Because anybody who does a shot put, they're usually a very well-balanced athlete that could, in actuality, not just do the shot put, but any type of sport. Because they have to be very versatile when they throw that big, that they throw that ball. The thing is heavy and they have to be very explosive, very agile. Very, very calculating how they do their throw. So, this is what Vince wants. And that's exactly what he got. 
Bourne got his clock cleaned. Done. Did it take longer than I thought? Yeah, it did. But I'm not surprised. I didn't want to make Bourne look bad. But let, let's make it... Um, Miles Bourne, I believe his name is Miles Bourne. I think... I think he's working with um, Drew Gulad, I believe. I could be wrong. Don't remember. But Ify, Ify, he, he looks like he's going to be pushed. Flat out, no problem, done. I'm not surprised. Next match, we got... Hmm. Dragon Lee. Why? Why did you do the open challenge? Why? Well, let me make this clear, guys. I have no problems with open challenges when they're in the right context. Now, many people would say, well, maybe it was going to be Dragon Lee who was going to do the open challenge before his back problem and had to go away for the next year to recover. Maybe. But let me make this clear. This is not the first time they've been doing open challenges on NXT. They've been doing it a lot, and that's the problem. Look, once in a while, you do an open challenge to get someone over. That's good. But when you have to do an open challenge almost for any person who holds a title, that devalues the title. Because a person who should be over doesn't need an open challenge every single time to be able to make it mean something. Now, when it came to Dom, it wasn't great. But at least Dom at least was allowed to defend the title sporadically. At least then you knew it had something behind it. It had some type of prestige that they decided, well, if they're going to make someone do it, It'll be all right that they'll do it at a pay-per-view at least once every month or two on regular TV. Usually it's like every month. Or at a pay-per-view. Something. The pay-per-view, well, pretty much their, their live events. Or maybe at least once within that month. Other than the PLE. Now, when it comes to Dragon Lee, now he won his match against Tyler Bates, which I like. Tyler Bates. He has a very special personality. It's not because he's a small guy that's built like a brick chicken house. He does have a lot of personality. But as I've been saying for many years, what has the NXT UK wrestlers done lately? The only one that has anything is Ilya Dragunov. Tyler Bates should be something. He's not. Nothing. Almost none of the original wrestlers that came from the UK, unless it's the women, the men have gotten nowhere. Almost none of them got anywhere. What about Gallus? Has Gallus meant anything? Has it been important? No. Tyler Bates? No. Only one that's done something is either Dragunov. When you send Pretty Deadly up to the main roster, yes, one of them got hurt. I can't remember. Davis, I believe he got hurt. When he came back, they really didn't do something great and important. Yet, they kept trying to emphasize that he's going to be amazing. Even though his arm was messed up, he was in a wheelchair. It, it wasn't really good booking for them. And when it came to just Alex, he didn't feel it. JD didn't care at all. I did care, but at the point once it came back, nothing changed. So essentially, it just feels empty for the UK wrestlers, except for one. Now, the next match. And of course, you know that um, Dragon Lee did win. Now, um, Drew Gulad and his team came over to him, asking him, is this a weekly thing? And he said yes, and somewhat in Spanish. And now, he's going to have to wait until next week to find out which one of his team is going to go up against him. I'm just saying it now. Here's the match that gets interesting because there was an accident. When it comes to Eddie Thorpe, when it comes to Dijak, what happened to Iron Survivor Challenge led to this. When the match was supposed to happen, it didn't happen immediately. Basically, they started fighting one another the minute that when Eddie Thorpe came out. Eddie froze a... This is why I believe this we got hurt, and that is Dijak. Dijak went head first into the steel steps, and I believe he got cut right on his temple right here. What was it? His left? Yeah, his left side of his head got cut, probably where the hole where you can grab the um, the steel steps 
the diamond plates still steps and lift them up and take them where you need to go. I think he might have cut his head right there because he was bleeding from there. And after he got back into the ring, started throwing Thorpe into one of the ring turnbuckles. He did it twice. Just grabbed him and just ran into the ring turnbuckle. One of the top turnbuckles came off, fell, and whacked them both. And while Dijak is still bleeding, he grabs an Eddie Thorpe and started beating him with the turnbuckle as well as the hook for the turnbuckle. Now, I do know for a fact that they do that on purpose in some cases. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen sometimes accidentally. But I don't believe this time around this was an accident. I do believe that the turnbuckle was rigged to actually pop off because they do have something called quick release. Latches. I believe that's what they're called. A quick release latch can be triggered electronically. In other words, with a um, electronic switch, pop, and it pops right off at the right moment. Or you can use a rope. I do believe that was electronically done. And bang. And after that, Eddie Thorpe was got, got his ass cleaned. If it was an accident... They would have not continued anything afterward if it was a real accident. It was not. It was a, a quick release for the top turnbuckle to fall. And we got Eddie Thorpe getting his ass cleaned and then thrown onto the second turnbuckle across his abdomen where supposedly his injured ribs are so he would get more sympathy. Now, am I still interested in seeing how far they're going to go? Yes, because there's only one thing they can do. One. Because by New Year's Evil, there's only one way to end this type of feud. One has to leave NXT. I'm saying it right now. One of the two has to leave NXT. The former Dijakovic. He's ready. He's had at least more than a year to work on Dijak. Way more than a year. And I believe he's ready to go back to the main roster because he was in retribution that sucked. Oh, it was so terrible. Wearing that mask, he looked like garbage. They fired him. He came back. He's now pretty much die jack. He is ready to go to the main roster. The question is, do they have a place for him or not? And are they willing to do it? Because a lot of times, when they got to do a blow-off, they don't do it. In this case, the only way they're going to solve this, one of them has to leave NXT. Either Eddie Thorpe or die jack. So that's the only option. That's the way I see it. I could be wrong, but you guys see below. Next, we got the second match for the breakout star for the men. Um, what is this guy's name? All right. Um, Riley Osmond. No, wait a minute. Not Osmond. Um, well, one of them is from... Chase you. I haven't forgot about Chase you. I haven't forgotten about Chase you. Um, what is this guy? Obs I can't pronounce his name. Not Oscar or Osmond. I think Osmond. Riley Osmond is from Chase you, but Carver, that guy, when I looked at him, he reminded me of Ufi. He reminded me of Ola Uba Ufi. Oba Ufi. Exactly the same thing. An exact copy. Now, many people would say, what's wrong with that? They got indie wrestlers who are pretty much copies of each other. And that's right. So what's the difference here? None. This is a problem that Vince didn't want to hear. That he's trading one stereotypical cookie cutter for another. There is no difference between, and I'm saying this clearly, there is no difference between indie wrestlers and collegiate athletes that have been doing football, baseball, basketball, track. In this case, he did shot put. And Craver, Craver, he did pretty much linebacking. There's no difference. They're exactly the same. So Vince was just a big hypocrite when he made that decision because you just had the two same type of guys. One who made you shot put, but he runs just like a linebacker. And then another one who literally is a linebacker formally. And you could see from the match 
it was almost an exact copy of the one before it. The only difference here is that Riley won the match instead of Crater did. Cry Criver, not Crater, Criver did. That's the only difference. But I can see them wanting to build him up eventually. I could see it. There's no problem. So, the only interesting thing was, one, he's from Chase U. And since they did have this segment of Chase U, saying they're trying to make some type of um, money drive because it's hundreds of thousands of dollars he owes. And that is Andre Chase. But here, when you see Riley is going to be increment. Well, how can I say this? It is obvious they're going to use Riley for this story angle for Chase U. It is obvious that now a Thea Hale is gotten a little smitten by the guy because he's British. And she thinks he's interesting and she says, oh, you smell good. Even though he was sweating his ass off, he said, I'm going to go and take a shower. She says, yeah, yeah, you should, but you smell good. And she got bothered by, um, what is it, Ziggy Day, what, what is it? Ziggy Day and um, Kiana James, I do believe, yeah. They basically were messing with her because that's a full-grown man, like she said. And that was Kiana. And she told Hale that she's just a small little girl. So you're going to see a little bit of this problem with them. But that's the way it's going to be. But it's understandable. They're going to do something with him. Now, here's the match I wish kind of didn't happen. Look, the Kid Alliance is somebody I like. It's not just because she's a beautiful woman. She is. It's not just because she's thick. She, she got cake. If you don't know what cake is, look it up. She got some cake. But you look at her, she does have a distinct look. And she is a decently good wrestler that has a lot of charisma. That is what you see with the Kid Alliance. Yes, she's another blonde. I know. There's many people who say, just like just Alex. Blue-eyed, apple pie, America, yes, fine, we know that, but who cares if she's got a good character, if she has a good look, and she can work generally good in the ring, and got charisma, who cares if she's pretty much stereotypical, because that's what wrestling is, but you decided in the very opening of the show, where Corey Jade, who just came back like the Kia Alliance did, and she's trying to make it about her. And yeah, we did get Valkyrie coming out. And Laya tried, Laura tried to make sure she understood that you're not going to get wherever you want to get. And then Davenport came out. Wanted to make it clear that since she's the Iron Survivor, it's going to be about her. And then Nakia Lyons comes out and there's a fight. I didn't want to see a tag match here because that's what they always do. I would have liked them not to go there. But they did. And the problem here was not the match was bad. It wasn't about being bad. And it wasn't about Paxley being there and acting a little bit like a Mickey James with a little Trish Stratus love. There's nothing wrong with that, and I'll get to that in a moment. It was just that it was so stereo, it was so telegraphed they were going to do it. And I would have liked them not to do it. I would have liked them to each have their own separate matches. Something before a... Well... <sighs> New Year's Evil is in three weeks. I would have liked them to stretch it out, this situation. Let either one of them, all of them have matches with different people. And then if you have to do a fight, fine. And then you have to do a segment, fine. And then you'll set it up for a New Year's Evil. But they didn't even do that. They just straight into a tag match, which I don't agree with. And then when it was over and it was Corey Jade who got the pin over Laya. But outside... Paxley came out, not Paxton, Paxley comes in, jumps into the ring, hugs, I believe she's touching her face, and Laya is going like, and there was that moment in the back, I know I'm not forgetting about when she opened the locker, and then you can see the picture that she had with Becky was replaced with Paxley's little face over Becky's face when she was holding up the title, that looked funky, there you go, look, she's acting like Mickey James, Paxley is pretty much horny now, just like a Mickey James was horny with a Tristratus. We got Miss Crazy number two. I'm not having a problem with that. It's fine. 
Now, finally, if I'm forgetting something, oh, Joe Gacy, I almost forgot Joe Gacy. I'm not going to talk about what's going on, going on with Hank and Tank, with Gals. I'm leaving that. This is about Joe Gacy. Am I feeling Joe Gacy as this guy who's so lost, he's going through all these different phases? No, I'm not feeling it. Honestly, the problem here is that Joe Gacy, after using schism for so long, needs to just move on. And the problem is the only way to move on is to be off TV for a while. And he's not off TV. They're just going to make him rotate through different types of personas. And many people say that could work. He's doing like an R-Truth type of thing. But he's not R-Truth. R-Truth only went crazy once. And that was um, John Morrison. He grabs a pack of cigarettes from someone in the, in the crowd and starts smoking. That was the only time R-Truth truly went crazy. And we're not getting that from Joe Gacy. We're getting a comedic type of style instead of someone who's just crazy nuts like our truth was that one time, 2000, I think 11 or 12, I think 11, when him and Morrison broke up, our truth grabbed someone's cigarettes, started smoking in, in, in the arena. And that just was the most different thing we ever saw from our truth. He hasn't done it since, but it doesn't matter. He was that good. Now, final, the talk between the Trick Williams and, let me give it to you like this. We know Ilya is not really great on the mic, but he did put over Trick. He did put over the catch with, <laughs> whoop that Trick has already been mentioned in Impact Wrestling. I don't know if it's mentioned, no, it's never been mentioned in NWA, I don't think. I haven't seen it in a while, so I don't know. I've only seen it once. And it's not mentioned in AEW, which it should be. It's a good Way to speak. Whoop that trick is a good catchphrase. Yes, someone else is using it, but why not? Who cares? Yeah, WWE may try and screw with you, but it was only done once with Mickey James with a Trinity. But whoop that trick is over. But Ilya tried to put him over, which he did. But then when they're finishing up their promos about Ilya actually liking Trick and is proud of him for all the hard work he put in after their match, and he made it back to him again, we get Mello. Now, Mello was attacked early in the show when he went inside, supposedly got attacked. Comes out and says, I know who attacked me, I know who attacked you, Trick, and it is Ilya Dragunov. And Ilya's going, what? Why would I do that? He said, to keep us off balance, to keep me from my title, he tricked you into coming out during what was Halloween Havoc, so, I would lose. It's been him all this time. And as they're arguing, and he pretty much says to Ilya, you don't deserve that title. We are on the same page. We're the ones who deserve it. And Trick is trying to calm down this boy, but it's not working. So, he grabs Ilya's belt, and that is Melo. Struggling with him. And after Ilya let go, he whacks to the head a Trick Williams. And everyone says... Mello's guilty is what we got. This storyline between Trick and Mello is better than most of the storylines on Raw or SmackDown. I'm telling the truth. Guys, I can understand you don't care about NXT. Whoever watches this, you don't care about NXT. But you cannot deny that the Trick and Mello storyline is one of the strongest storylines they got in NXT. I think it's the strongest. Flat out. They got a lot of storylines. Chase you is up there. It may not be the best, but it's one of them they're pushing. This is the strongest storyline NXT has, and they got a few of them. But then when you look at Raw or SmackDown, they got very few. And that's telling that a storyline from NXT actually can outshine most of the storylines on Raw or SmackDown. But that's just me. And I hope you enjoy this NXT. Leave a comment below. Peace.